All right, we welcome anybody in who may be watching with us on Facebook. We had a good business meeting, and now we're ready to take a look and pray together and spend a few moments here in Bible study together. So let me open us up in prayer, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at our prayer list. Lord God, we thank you for the gift that prayer is, Lord, that you would want to hear from us, Father, the burdens of our heart, the things that, that, that you place upon our hearts to be concerned over, Father. We thank you that we can lift those up to you and trust that you will work your will. Well, we ask that you would do that very thing in the, in the names and uh, in, in the lives of the people that will be named and the ones that won't be named this evening. Lord God, for all those on our prayer list, we pray your will above all else. Help us to trust you in every situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, well, you see there's a, a few updates uh, on our prayer list, and I've got a couple others that are additions that came in since we printed. Um, the family of Rod Sotil, that's, uh, that's Jonathan Jean Grosso's family member, who um, they, 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 his girlfriend found him passed away. Uh, they don't, I, don't, I have not heard from Jonathan as to what they think happened, uh, but pray for their family. Um, and then in the, under the at-home category, Steve Cockrell, uh, Kayla and I were laughing about, well, not laughing about, we were just thinking, you know, when we were updating, we were like, well, we can just take Sandy off because she's doing pretty good and put Steve right, or Steve back, right back on there. Um, Steve is dealing with some gallbladder issues now. Um, of course, Sandy also is not quite finished with her. She's doing a lot better. She's been at church the last couple Sundays. We've been glad to have both of them, but, but Steve's about to have to go through that too. Sandy actually today, she's home already, but she actually had a procedure to take some of the stents out of the gallbladder area that they put in and, uh, and to do some cleanup work in there. Steve said this evening that they got most of what they were trying to get out, but they're going to have to go back in uh, and do some more cleanup for Sandy. So they're, they're kind of back and forth between the two of them and, uh, and dealing with gallbladder issues all the way through. But Sandy's really had a, a rough three months uh, with the gallbladder. So, so Kayla, we might have to put her right back on there. So, but, uh, so. Is she here? Well, good, 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 very good. Um, so... Um, now Brandy's here as well, and so she's her foot is healing. San, Sandy is is still stepmother, Steve's Steve's wife. Um, so uh, so continue to pray for Brandy though. She did uh, she did hurt her foot. Uh, a couple more that are uh, at home uh, is Linda Myers. That's my mother-in-law, Sherry's mama. She fell this afternoon at work and uh, and broke her wrist. She broke her ulna and her radius. So. Um, so she's hurting pretty good. So Sherry went down to meet her at the ER, and they, they got her taken care of. She might have to have some surgery. They're going to let, let the swelling go down and find out. Uh, so pray for Linda Myers. And, uh, and then also her husband, my father-in-law, uh, has got some cellulitis going on in one of his toes. They thought it might have been a gout attack, but it was cellulitis. And so they're trying to treat that and keep him out of the hospital too. So, you know, when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? That's uh, <laughs> some some wild things. So that's Bobby Myers as well. So, uh, you know, you go down and visit your in-laws and then they fall apart the next you know, day or two after. So, uh, but we, they're, they're doing okay. They're just trying to get those things fixed up. Um, also, uh, Ms. Shirley Burkett, she took a fall yesterday. And, uh, and so she was in the hospital overnight. She's still there at St. Dominic's and uh, is, is, uh, they were observing her to make sure that she, when she hit her head that she didn't have any type of bleed or anything like that. But pray for Miss Shirley. She's been hurting in her back and her legs for you know, quite a while now, and, uh, and this is just adding to that. Uh, so pray for Miss Shirley Burkett, and she again is at St. D. Um, we got some great news yesterday. After a tough weekend of not being sure what the results would be, but after trusting the Lord mightily, <laughs> Ms. Jan, why don't you tell us what we what you found out yesterday? I think a lot of us already know, but but update us. I don't know if I can. All right. Well, if if not, tag Grady in, and if not, then Mr. JP will tell us. It's fine. Let's just work it down the line. I'll try. We went back to the have my scan results yesterday, and I got a clean scan, and also um, have to go back in two months, have blood work done, and he said no more chemo. He says I've done everything they can, and they can't. He sounded pretty choked up when he called me. <laughs> there may have been a turtle present, so I don't know. Maybe.
maybe wait for the results or whatever. Mm. And I thought, God, I can't do this. You know, pull me back together, get me out the hall, then I can cry. So. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's been a long, long two years and a tough yeah. two years. Mm -hmm. And I know nobody knows how tough that great. He's been there two o'clock in the mornings when I wake him up and say, I just need to talk, you know. And I know he's heard me crying in the other room. And just, I love him and I, I thank him. Thank God every night for everything he's done for me. What a great, what a great testimony! I know, I know that year, these two years have been tough years, but, but what a great testimony! He's walked with you through it. Well, we are so thankful for that report. Doctor Sego, we were thanking him over and over and over, and he said, well, "Don't thank me. Thank the Lord for giving me the help, y'all." You know. That's right. The doctors can do some things, but they can't do a thing that God doesn't allow them to do. We are so thankful for that report and uh, said now Grady can work on taking care of some things on him. <laughs> but first, they've got to celebrate now. They celebrated, wasn't it Waffle House right afterwards? That, that's the way to celebrate right there now. Well, that's the first time she's ate a waffle with There you go. Hey. In 20 years. <laughs> No, no, no. Saturday night Because once, once we got the news and everything, he looked at me and he said, well, what are we going to do now? Yeah, well, you know? yeah. <laughs> we don't have to come back. Now, Jan told me that Grady mentioned he had a weed eater that she could use <laughs> on some of these yards. I don't think that flew very far, though. I don't... <laughs> so she's, she's still looking for what's going to happen now. When I'm outside, I never have to tell her to get out of my way. <laughs> Jan, you and I have that in common. I, he wouldn't have told me to get out of his way. <laughs> All right. Uh, and their friend, Robert Mariscalco, who had surgery. Um, you know, he had uh, cancer in his, his tongue, his mouth, and mm -hmm. his throat. Oh, it, it, it was serious. This is serious. Surgery. They said he'd probably be in the hospital for five, six weeks. Well, that man's back home now. He's at home. Had the surgery last Thursday. That's great. They said he was doing just beyond what they thought they didn't release him back home wow sure sure but but being able to be home deal with it instead of being in the hospital even still now that's uh that's that's great well, we praise god for that as well and gerald was going to have his uh gallbladder taken out but they already won one but, but anyway they canceled his surgery because they don't have the the help at the hospital to do the surgery they got home. This is at the VA. Wow. So they're supposed to call him today to reschedule it. So they're going to try to get him in as fast as they can get the help to do it. Man. Wow. Well, speaking of help and at the towards the VA, uh, Jamie Smith flew out and is headed. She's at, at where she's going. So, well, for the time being, anyway, for basic training in the Air Guard. So pray for Jamie and, and for her family as well. All right. Any other updates? Anybody have any prayer requests that they'd like Frankie, to answer? You can take Frankie off. He's okay. Well. Excellent. Let's let's put uh, Helen. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Chris. Bad sinus infection. Miss Helen Wyatt's just really under the weather now. Miss Chris and I were talking about before prayer meeting. It won't slow her down too bad, but. <laughs> Not much. Day or two. All right. Andrews is at home. Is she at home? Okay, we've been trying to figure out. Yeah. Who's at Mildred Andrews? Very good. I'm glad she was able to come home. Okay. Miss Noreen, I hadn't heard anything from Brother David lately. Have you heard anything? I have, but I can't tell. Oh, okay, that's all right. Well, no, I mean, I can't. I have to read it. No, that's okay. That's all right. I, I just didn't. I just, my eyes hit his name just as I glanced across it. All right. Well, let's take a few moments in to circle up around your tables and, uh, and pray for those that you would like to pray for. And then I'll wrap us up in prayer in just a moment. Thank you, Lord. Watching over her and 
bring her through this process. Last two years have done it for us. And had it hard, oh, but we just know that Thank you. 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 Thank you
and uh, things like Christian colleges and, and, and all kinds of efforts come out of that cooperative program. So that's one of the reasons why I, I believe God has me as a Southern Baptist pastor is because I believe in that with all my heart, that, that teaming up to be able to serve and to reach the world. Um, of course, just like in a local church, just like in a family, if you want to break it down to a smaller unit, just like in a marriage, sometimes we get a great picture of teamwork and sometimes we don't always agree on everything. And this particular year at the Southern Baptist Convention's annual meeting, um, there, were, there were four nominations for president. That usually doesn't happen. There's usually not that many of them. Uh, but it showed, and, and the media really got a hold of it these last couple of days, um, about how fractured and how splintered they say that the Southern Baptist Convention is. And, th and they're not wrong in some ways. There's a lot of, at that level, there's a lot of infighting and a lot of disagreement and a lot of, uh, of, of politicking going on. I'm not, I'm not getting into any of that because I really believe that if we're following the Lord's will, he'll, he'll put us on the same page. And if we can't get on the same page, then we need to double check step one to see if we're actually following the Lord's will, if we're just pushing our own agenda. Um, but I think that as I was reading just a few articles this week, uh, I mean, and talking about the big papers, the, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the, you know, the, the, these big city papers who normally aren't going to pay much attention to what Southern Baptists are doing about anything. They don't care if some pastor from Alabama got elected to lead a denomination. But we are the largest Protestant denomination in America. We have been for some time. Now, we're our numbers are actually shrinking. That's a different topic altogether, but we're still the largest one as of right now. And so they are paying attention to it. And then when you throw that into our, our national political climate um, with all of the, uh, you know, the, the conservatives versus liberals and so on and so forth, all the dissension there, this is why this is such a big news story, you know, that coming out of this. But here's the thing. It bothers me greatly that that's why they're covering our denomination. It bothers me greatly that we even have fodder for them to be able to write articles like that. It bothers me greatly that there are great men and women of God right now who've been in Nashville this week who even gave the appearance, much less the truth and fact, that we're not all together for the cause of Christ. Uh, that, hurts, that hurts my heart. It doesn't make me not want to be a Southern Baptist, but it makes me want to be a better Southern Baptist. Um, and, and when I think about that, God just pointed these verses out, verses you've heard before. We've, uh, uh, they're, they'll probably be pretty familiar to you. But in, in Matthew chapter 5, starting with verse 14, reading through verse 16, as part of the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, just after Jesus tells us uh, about how blessed will be so many different types of people in the Beatitudes and how our, our thoughts and how our, our demeanor should be, he then tells us in verse 13 that we are the, the salt of the earth and, the, and that with his gospel we should bring flavor and preservation to the world. And that's what he chooses to do through us. And then in verse 14 he says, he says this. He says, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. Excuse me, that's verse 15. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong one. All right. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Now verse 15, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, why does that small passage come to mind in the midst of all this crazy political, you know, gaming going on in the Southern Baptist Convention? I think it's so important, I believe with all my heart it's so important for us as Christians, as representatives, as ambassadors for Christ, that we show Christ to the world. And that's what he's talking about here. He tells us that as his followers, if we're claiming heaven for eternity and a future with God in heaven in perfection and away from sin and despair and hurt and disease and all those things, if we're claiming that, then right now, we should be portraying Christ in every way that we possibly can. And when we don't, we need to be mindful of it, get on our knees, accept his forgiveness for not doing it, and get up and, and try to be more obedient. Not try to work harder out of our own efforts, but try to submit ourselves more fully to Christ. That's, that's what the Christian life is all about. And he says here, he says, you're the light of the world. That's a big statement for us. He is the light of the world, but he comes to shine through his people. 
That's what Jesus does. He comes, when we talk about asking Jesus into our heart, well, that's the idea is that we receive the light from him and that we don't block it. We don't do like he says here. They don't put it uh, under a bowl. No, we set it on the highest place in the house so it can shine out. We don't want our light to shine because our light is darkness compared to his light. But we want his light to shine. And, and he says, to let it shine throughout. And then in verse 16, he says, in the same way, let your light shine before others. And when that happens, they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The articles I read this week, and it's not us, honestly. It, we're not involved in that politicking. I don't think, I don't remember, it's probably been a few years since Harris was had people at the Southern Baptist Convention. And I'll be honest with you, unless the Lord you know, changes my heart, you probably won't send your pastor anytime soon. <laughs> you know, I, can, I can stay here and watch Baptists fight. But anyway, that's a different story. I'm kidding. But, uh, but. We're not, we're not the ones that they're writing that article about, but we're lumped into it. And all Christians are lumped into it because of the tone with which the world takes. They look and see, see, they're just like everybody else. They're part of the big problem, as opposed to being able to see the light of Christ shining out. You see the issue, right? You see the problem there. The problem is, is that we're known in the world as just another group. We're known in the world so many ways, in so many different thoughts, um, at least on a, on a big scale, as, well, just another religion. When we have the true light of Jesus, we've got to let it shine. We've got to make sure that, that people see that and they see that we're different. And that's why it hurts my heart so much that we could be, you know, it, that any Christian denomination could be lumped in just like some other civic organization and say, well, they believe this and they, they think they should hold this other group down and get over on some other people and things like that. That just drives me crazy because that's so against, that's so diametrically opposed to what Christ wants to do and deserves to be able to do if we've received salvation from him through us. And so I just, I, as, I, as I read that this week, it just encourages me that what people see in my life, what people see in our church and, and the part that I get to play in our church and that you get to play in our church, part that people see as our parts of being part of Christianity, whether it be Southern Baptists or, or Christians in general, it's important. I mean, Jesus says himself that how are they going to, how is God going to get their attention? Well, one of the big ways he's going to get their attention is when Christian people live the Christian life before them. And then they're, they're going to see something different, have the opportunity then to ask a question and then have the opportunity to hear the gospel and eventually come to that last part to where they come and give their life to Christ and are able to begin to give their give glory to God, their Father, as well. So I encourage you this week, and, and it may not just be the Southern Baptist Convention, it may be our church, your family, your, you know, whatever group you may find, or groups you find yourself a part of. Uh, if you claim salvation, as most of us in the room do, if, if you claim the name of Christ, let's represent him well. Let's let his light shine through us. Let's not be known just as any other group or any other club, any other organization. Um, all those other clubs and organizations are fine, but you know what? There's only one that has Jesus at the head of it, and that's the church. So I encourage you as you go out to, uh, to you know, if you have people say, oh, you're a Southern Baptist, I hear, that you, um, I hear that you don't like, you know, people of different colors. Well, tell them, no, that's not necessarily what, like the case now, you know. Uh, oh, I, I hear that you, you know, you want to do this and do that. Well, explain to them, hey, First off, we don't all think alike. And then let them know that my main goal is to represent and exalt Christ in my life in every way that I can. Let's pray together as we wrap up. Father in heaven, let us do that very thing. Let us, let us represent you well. We can't by ourselves, but because you have saved us, because you inhabit our lives and our hearts, because you empower us and motivate us and equip us to serve you and to serve you well, you give us the opportunity to glorify you. So, Lord, help us to do that. Help us to let your light shine through us. Father, if we find that, that we're doing things out of our own power, Father, help us to repent of that and to come back and let you show your power through us. Lord God, I thank you for this church, and I pray that you would continue to grow each and every one of us, not leaving any of us out. Grow us in the way that we shine your light in our lives, all to your glory. And Father, would you draw others and bring the increase as a result of that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I forgot to say, Mr. Wayne.